And we're live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the narrative. Um, I usually forget to say that. I don't think I've ever said that enough. Uh, out of 99, I've only said it one or two times. Tonight, we're going to talk about gaming and a lot of uh, cosplay and fashion and uh, tabletop and other sorts of gaming with uh, my friend, Net Natras. And uh, she's also going to be this person here. Uh, over there, um, in Craigle, also known as Ella Joy Johnson. Uh, and if you've read our comic book online for free on risingsuncomics.com, you'll find out what she's about there. But also, um, on the 11th of July, on Saturday, we've, we've going to have um, Lynette dress up and cosplay as our character and hoping to get lots of photos taken with, with our young ones and our old ones. Um, so before... Further ado, uh, Lynette, please introduce yourself and we'll go on from there. Thank you for joining us tonight. Yeah, um, I'm, uh, yeah. so as you said, my name is Lynette. Um, I um, have been cosplaying for a little while and I'm, I'm really looking forward to um, doing the Incredigirl. I've been working hard on doing some pieces in conjunction with Aru, so that um, there's just a bit of something special for everyone to enjoy at the punch. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. It's, uh, it's, it's talking about um, cosplay. What made you get into it? Um, so um, a little while ago, I saw, um, went over to a friend's place and they were playing magic at a tabletop, and they had seven or eight decks. They're all sitting around the table playing magic, and um, they, you know, got me into this. And there's this set that's called Theros. I opened this card and I got. Elspeth Sands champion. I was like, that's that's the character I want to be. So um, I went and I found somebody that would like produce this cosplay for me. Um, so I, I I had to really thank um, Wayne's Workshop and a couple of the guys up there. Um, Thomas and I have the name written. I like, oh, I'm terrible for names. I meet so many people. Uh, Thomas and Justin, yeah, and they 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 commissioned that and made it all for me. So did you have to pay, uh, did you have to pay for this um, costume? Well, I was their first commission, so I did pay for a lot of the running costs um, mm -hmm. because I fortunately work at um, at um, Arthur's Emporium. I was able to get a lot of the things purchased and for them, like the cloak and um, things like that, fabrics. Mm. Um, but, um, yeah, they, they put a lot more hours in than they charged me for, and um, mm. both of them have gone on to do really cool things. Like mm. Thomas Heyman has um, been a guest judge for a few different cosplay um, mm. things, and uh, Justin Smith is actually working in the industry. I can't actually disclose where. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, I've seen some of that work, and he's and he's brilliant. And it's and it's a great thing about like little, um, you know, when you set up of like interest, uh, like minded people uh, working in, on something, and you end up like people actually going into greater things through it. And I mean, like you look at what we're doing um, through Plunge and stuff. You got a lot of people, um, you know, being able to like do competitions with the flesh and blood thing. You know, that yeah. a few years back. Won't have a chance to do that, putting that on, and now they're able to do that, and, and um, yeah. include so many other people that take part in that. So, tell us about um, your involvement with Magic the Gathering. Um, so I've um, played Magic the Gathering just at my friend's place to start with, obviously. Um, then um, one of our great friends, he was a manager at Paper Plus in Whanganae, um, Chris Jittery. And he was able to have a host us there. And we mm. played Fredo Magic there for a very long time um, until unfortunately um, the, you know, a, a change of ownership happened and um, his position no longer existed. Um, he went over to um, Storytime and tried mm. to continue on with us there. But unfortunately with the rise of online and MTG Arena, um, it's put a little bit of a, cheese in the, ch you know, a tink in the chunk. So um, there wasn't as many people playing. And then, unfortunately, COVID 
mm. um, which has affected everybody. Um, mm. So we can no longer play there. Um, but mm. we've got a friend um, who's just set up a place called Tartarus Games, um, where we're playing Wednesday and Friday night um, commander nights. Mm. And it's, you know, we've just got a few core people who would love to have more playing. Mm. Um, so he's set up a, on Facebook if you go through the um, the Whangarei Magic the Gathering group, you can find it. Awesome. Yeah. Look, the other thing is like, well, I mean, like back to, um, you know, with Plunch, you've, because Storytime's going to be there, he's going to be able to talk to a whole lot of people that are interested in that. Is he, uh, I'm sure he's going to bring, his, um, you know, the whole stuff yeah. to sell as well. Yeah, unfortunately, Chris is no longer selling any of it, um, okay. but they're, they're um, more along the modelling side and doing all of the, um, like, the D&D models and uh, the, um, what's the other thing? Um, there's a war game, uh, 40K. I don't right. know much Warning. about it, but yeah. there are some real hardworking club members that really mm -hmm. enjoy that, and, and, and it's an art form, painting all your um, little armies and then getting all your points up. That's the very little I know about that. Um, so um, they're kind of basing um, story time is a bit stronger on their models and stuff at the moment um, mm -hmm. because unfortunately there wasn't that supporter base anymore for the magic. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, um, Josh is working um, at Tartarus Games. He currently, I'm not plugging the vape share, but he is the manager there and he's mm -hmm. got a room where he's offering people somewhere to play. That's yeah. really cool. And, that, and, and that's the thing, eh? it's like a, a lot of times you don't know who's playing what game and, and then when people yeah. put, put together a place to play and, um, and let through word of mouth let people know this is where it's happening and then you end up yeah. getting a bigger group of people playing and enjoying that. Now, let's talk about Magic the Gathering. What got you interested in Magic the Gathering? So, um, I hate to say it, but back when I was a teenager in the 90s, um, mm -hmm. I actually played it with some of my friends at school at intermediate mm -hmm. level, but I kind of enjoyed it, but I never mm -hmm. had the funds being, you know, lower class or whatever you call it mm -hmm. to buy the cards. So I just played with my friend stuff, but then I went to an all girls school yeah, and then I moved North and to Maharangi area. And unfortunately up there, um, it's not card games. It's, get out and do stuff kind of thing. So mm. um, so then it wasn't until I came to Whangarei for mm. jobs, you know, to move out of the area to for jobs and so forth. Um, I um, moved into a place and the guys next door were playing and they invited mm. me over and I was like, I quite like this. And then the set that was just brought out was based on Greek mythology and I right. love Greek mythology. And that's kind of what pulled me in. And the other thing is the artwork. The artwork is absolutely amazing. I wish I had some of my cards right here. Yeah. But it's just, it's beautiful. It's, they've got proper artists commissioned. And, mm. like, and it's a strategy game and it's maths and it's reading and it's all those things that young people should be, you know, doing. And, mm. and it's strategy games are really good for your brain power. Yeah. And that's why I quite enjoy it. I've never been the best at playing mm. but i enjoy seeing my own little improvements as i go along strategy games are quite interesting um it, it, it um there was there's this element where you can um f figure out problems and work through uh issues that you have but then also by actually seeing how other people in the game work through that you can actually apply that in real life in situations that you never thought of like you know how do you work through this issue if you're faced with this issue um i, I quite enjoy that i mean i i love um i haven't played for a long time but um yo you know the old risk is one of my favorite games of all time all right? yeah yeah I've got uh, even, risk. <laughs> you know, even this, like classic to the point where i actually had um a table paint i painted my table that way but when i got separated i ended up leaving the table behind of that yeah. original, uh, you know, original world, and I actually painted. I think I actually painted a new, little New Zealand in there just to make sure that it was in there. <laughs> I, um, one of the things about um, strategy games is that you can actually, like we said, apply them in real life. Sometimes, yeah. With, with yeah. Issue. Have you found that with um, working through with playing Magic: The Gathering? 
Yeah, well, um, so I hate to say it, but my mother always taught me, don't bring me a problem, bring me a solution to that problem and we can work through it. So I've always had this mentality that there's not problems, there's just solutions yet to find. So uh, that's that's just the way I work um, and I bring it to my workplace, which is like, you know, someone comes and I need this. We may not have exactly that, but mm. I'm able to go and help them find a solution, something solu similar that would actually do fit the problem. And that's yeah. just unfortunate. That's how I work, so I don't see it being, a, you know, mm. a total difference. <laughs> Apart from, um, like, I mean, recently, I mean, going to some weird issues that people are having with uh, Magic the Gathering now, saying that orcs are like black people, the minorities. Did you do you think of that? Because I don't. Um, for me, I've um, I don't think of that as anything. Um, anything like there's nothing to yeah. it. It is with um, Magic the Gathering, so there isn't that many orc cards to be honest. Mm. Um, but that's you know, Minotaur cards are generally red, um, zombie cards are generally black, you've got humans that are generally white, and mm. elves and beasts that are generally green. Mm. The basis that they are put into those categories mm. is upon what the benefits of the actual color pie. So your greens big stomping, your mm. reds burn, you get directly hurt you directly. Um, oh, I forgot blue, blue's merfolk. Um, blue kind of messes with your mind, does things like that. So the creatures are actually more dependent on their um, on their um, the balance of what they do, not the colour that they are. Right. Yeah, I, when, dead kind of thing, yeah. when I heard that, oh, for me personally, I was like, it's your own, you're inputting your own bias into something that doesn't exist. And I found mm. that quite hilarious because a lot of times people do that because they want to see something in something that isn't actually there and has yeah. never been put there. I mean, as a creator myself, as a writer, um, I always think of like, what is the outcome of what I'm trying to do? I don't, I don't work on the person's race or anything like that i'm just looking at what looks great i mean when you talk about um you know when we talk about incredible it came out of a story about uh, orphans in um in romania it had nothing to do with color she was it had nothing to do with that it was just she's an orphan from romania she was yeah. um you know, because of the Ceausescu uh communist um regime a lot thousands and thousands and thousands of baby were babies were orphaned and so yeah. for me, I was like, you know, when I heard the story way back in about 2003, I think it was, while I was sitting in a church, listening to these people talk about the situation that was happening in Romania, talking about how these children were basically having their uh, feet tied with cotton uh, cl um, cloth to a cage, which was their cot, metal cots. And they were, um, their nappies were with feces, they weren't cleaned up. And I was like, Oh my goodness, how could this happen in this day and age, you know, in this country, which, you know, in Europe? And I was like, well, she is European. She's, of course, she's going to be white, right? So she can't suddenly be some other color. So let's, you know, and then later on, about 2007, when I came away, from, um, you know, came out of my film school, I was, I asked my sister, uh, my niece, I said, like, if you were ever, if you're ever a superhero, what would you like yeah. to be? And she was like, yeah. I want to be in Credit Girl because the movie was at that time. And she's like about four yeah. or five years old. She's running around, yeah. you know, I want to be in Credit Girl. And I was like, cool, I'll I'll make you your own superhero. It wasn't yeah. about, hey, what color you are, what that city. It was like, this is what I'm going to do for you. And a lot of times when people are creating heroes and stuff like this, they're doing it because there's other, there's something in them to, hey, there's something I want to talk about and stuff. And um and yeah. out of it, we get, you know, you, you keep building on it out of nothing and you slowly become into this physical thing. And I think when people start putting their um, outside input into something that's got nothing yeah. to do with the artist, they kind of ruin it. And I think um, yeah. that harms what is actually there. It's like being a nerd, right? I'm not a nerd myself, but I mean, I can understand, <laughs> I can understand their culture. I'm a geek. Uh, you know, I'm a geek as well, but yeah. <laughs> people don't understand the difference between a nerd and a geek. And the difference yeah. 
comes down to computers and maths. If you're yeah, a nerd, yeah. you understand maths and science. If you're not a um, nerd, you're a geek who loves the whole pop culture. You love collecting. You love gaming. You don't want, you don't deep dive into it. You just enjoy it. And yeah. one, a lot of times people come in from the outside going, well, I want to get into this because I love this. But they have a weird inside um, in their heads. If I'll get into this to change how this is to into my own uh, ideology. Well, there is a great thing that MTG does do. So as I mentioned, like Planeswalkers, we've got Liliana behind me and mm. my, wrong way around, um, my Elspeth costume. So they're both white. That's fine. Mm. But in Magic the Gathering, they also have black. They have Asian. They have um, gender neutral. They also have um, males, that are females that are actually males and think like that. They're, they're really inclusive. So mm. I think that for anyone to think that they are um, racist or sexist in any way is really irrelevant <laughs> because they've always been inclusive of all people. Yeah, and, you know? and, and the, that's what I mean. So, like, when people don't actually play the game, they don't understand it. They don't yeah. understand what's going on in it. And it's like me coming and going, uh, so why, why is that character that way and then other way? And then, then you turn around and go, have you ever played Magic the Gathering before? I was like, no, I heard about it online. <laughs> <laughs> and the great thing with all the Magic the Gathering, there's actually way back in the beginning, they start off with novels, books, yeah. to back stories. And so at the moment, there's actually online graphic stories about each one of the storylines. So it's mm. not just a game. You can actually read along and get into each one of the different stories and lures and things that are going on. There's a whole like story for the Theros block and then there's dragons and bending time and all sorts. And it's actually a really interesting thing to do. I, I love the whole um, fantasy element of Magic the Gathering. Um, I haven't gone around to reading the gra um, graphic novels yet. I know there's graphic novels out oh, there. The graphic novels are cool, yeah. And, and that's sort of, you know, and that's the other thing. So if somebody wants an easy in to understand, um, you know, um, Magic the Gathering, it's just to pick up a novel or pick up a graphic novel to be able yeah. to read that. Um, the other thing is that when you have, like, graphic novels, you can actually see what the characters look like and see yeah. the battle scenes, the beautiful artwork. And as a comic book person, I, I just enjoy seeing art, beautiful, beautiful art. The other yeah. thing about the Magic the Gathering, it's based on European mythology. It's not based on uh, Asian. Not all. Oh, not okay. <laughs> all right. um, so there has been a couple that aren't just European. There was mm. one that was um, Kamigawa, which was actually based on the Japanese mythology okay. way back. Um, so, and some recent ones, um, we just did one that was all storybooks and um, mythologies. Um, so basically, King Arthur Round Table, Brothers Grimm type. Um, and we've just done a planes which was kind of a beast type mythology, and they had alternate cards that were Godzilla. Wow. So, yeah, they are very inclusive of all different types of things. So, mm. and, and then they have their own completely con created things like Zendikar, mm. um, which they actually have a graphic tabletop book with all the artworks in it to go wow. with it as well yeah so awesome. it, it yeah so they they create their own and they also take from place because it's it's a way to um bring people in and because they are planeswalkers yeah they have the spark they can move from one place so um Elspeth, the character that way um mm. she was on uh, the plane of i've got to get this right she was um, a Phyrexian slave. Mm. She um, ignited her spark at some stage during that slavery. She planeswalked to Theros mm. and to another place as well and met different people and planeswalked all over the place. Um, and so that's the great thing that they've done with Magic the Gathering. It leaves mm. them the ability to create whole new worlds. Um, and so, yeah, we've even had one that was great based on Egyptian yeah. mythology as well. So it's it's really cool. And that's the beauty of something like this. You can always build more to it, isn't it? Um, I've learned something new, right? that there is all these other worlds that are a part of this Magic the Gathering thing. It's not yeah. just, um, just the monsters and magic and uh, 
you know, your characters and sword and sorcery and fantasy, but there's also these other characters, um, Greek mythology, as you mentioned before, and now you've got Egyptian yep. and Japanese. Um, let's move um, Is there anything else you want to say about that before we move on to other things? Um, I think I, we've covered most of everything I want to talk about magic. Cool. <laughs> I just really enjoy it, so, yeah. <laughs> awesome. How long have you been playing it? Um, so this time, so seven years, okay. seven years, yeah. And this is uh, playing it seriously, like on a weekly basis? Yeah, yeah, because uh, when I started playing tabletop at the Neighbours, I was playing with, like, we had a box of, like, mm. 10 decks. You picked a deck, deck out of there, a 60-card deck, or they didn't have a limit because it was tabletop. That when you play around the kitchen table, uh, there's not usually banned cards. You just play with what, whatever you've got, and it's it's just a free-for-all, and it's quite fun, but it's a, a bit of a crash course for learning how to play. How long, uh, how long does a game normally last? So um, when you're playing in a tournament, they're all timed, and I think it's like 40-minute rounds, and then you, once you, you get um, – so it's a best of two. Mm -hmm. So um, you, if, you've, if you get one each, you've got to play a third game. If you win two, you've won, and then you go on, and it's done like a Robin, uh, a Robin system where, where you, if Robin. you win, you go on to play the next person, and if you lose, you play the people that lost kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but if you're playing a game like Commander, it can last up to two to three hours. Wow. It's Just depends on how the decks are playing, yeah. That's awesome. And I, I think, um, is there an age limit into um, being introduced into it or...? Um, so the advisory on the packaging is um, 13 and up just because it's, it's a violent game. Um, mm. But there are, I see on, you know, in, in this community, there is a lot of children that play. And I think it's actually not a bad thing for them to play, but they really need to have the permission of their parents because of it is a war game kind of thing. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so let's see. Um, let's talk about um, you getting involved in... Um, Flesh and Blood, because yep. did you get in right at the start or did you get it coming later? I came in, um, so um, my good friend Joe, um, he, he's one, the, one of the ones who helped me introduce me to the Kitchen Top ma Magic. Um, he said to me, oh, do you want to check out Flesh and Blood? Um, we're playing down at uh, Glygolf. Um, we've got this thing happening, and I was like, oh, I'm working. I can't get there till late. He says, oh, that's all right. I'll teach you how to play. So I came in a little bit later, and they showed me this um, Ira deck. Um, so it's a, a tiny hero. You have 20 um, health. That's why I said anyway, and you have four intellect. So you get to start the game with four cards, and you use your cards to play more cards and you kind of just war that way and until you get them down to zero and um i actually found it really easy to follow and really easy to pick up because mm. because i had the basis on magic um i understood that there's a process like you, this happens this happens this happens mm. so in, in magic it's um um upkeep untap um first main phase Attack phase, second main phase, clean up, kind of in turn clean up. And so with Flesh and Blood, it's kind of also a bit like that. So you start your turn with your cards. Um, you've got, you can do your, each chain link of um, attack, and then you've got um, your clean up. And it's actually a little bit less phasey, but it's mm. a lot easier to pick up. And also, again, beautiful artwork, really nice artwork. Yeah, I, I mean, it was you know telling me about how great the artwork looks, and I've seen some of the artwork online, and it, it, they look brilliant. And I think uh, they did a great job with the artwork. And uh, and that's the thing about the ga um, games that uh, you know, especially with card games, they're so you know the cards are so small, and yeah. you know they've got it's to so straight away grab. It it. <laughs> yeah, and you got to be able to straight away grab the attention of the player as well as those who are watching and who want to be interested in playing this. So I'm quite excited for that to be a plunge as well um is it um you play euchre and uh 500 as competitions as well so how long have you been playing that um so uh, of course i've been playing euchre and 500 since my mother taught me when i was a bit younger um but um 
um, I recently um, joined up at the Carmo Club and um, decided to join the card section there. And so um, what happens is on a, um, <clears throat> on a Monday night we meet up um, I'm one of the younger players because the age range is like, I think our oldest player is about 92 wow. um, in our particular section. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll, there'll be about 18 of us will sit down and we'll play. And it's it's played, you know, you play four rounds of 500, uh, four hands, and then whoever's won go around the table kind of thing. The same again with Euchre, it's timed mm -hmm. um, and or if you get to 11 points, you win. Um, but it's also another strategy game knowing, you know, it's played with your, your standard playing cards. Um, mm. And it's um, with Euchre, it's a bit more of a um, chance game because you've only got half the deck. With 500, you can almost count cards, work out what's been played and what's happening and whether you've got the highest card to play. Um, and I've um, also recently went down to. Um, play in the national yuka it was in blenheim last year um it was my first national tournament I, I really enjoyed it and i managed to be in the top half on the first day which meant i could play for the trophy didn't do so well on the second day because cards aren't always in your favor but i felt i'd really achieve something by getting into that next thing mm -hmm. um and so, yeah, Clubs NZ actually runs cards sections in a number of different places. Um, and um, it's, and we also play in a friendly competition with the Auckland groups and we go down once a month and play Yuka with them as well. So, and, and it's good because you get to interact with more different people and, and you just get to have fun. But some people are very, very competitive. <laughs> so... Well, I mean, there, are there prizes in this? Is there monetary prizes? Or, um, yeah. so on a club night, um, we all put in, um, say, $5, and then it, um, whoever gets first and second gets some money back. Mm -hmm. um, when you play in a tournament, there's usually cash prizes for first, second, mm -hmm. and third, and also trophies. Wow. So, yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a legitimate sport almost, yeah. 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 So how long have you been playing that? Like both Ayuka and 500? Um, well, I've been playing them for a long time, those two games. But, yeah, I've only been playing up at the Karma Club since May. Um, it may be a couple of years up at the Karma Club. Yeah. Mm. Um, unfortunately, this year our national tournaments were um, both cancelled due to COVID. But mm. um, I've got um, a um, Northland 500 and Yuka coming up and hopefully I'm able to make the team because it sounds like we've got a few people interested. So, Awesome. Okay, let's talk about um, about cosplay. Um, and yep. really, um, like you, you design your own cosplay now. Now, you said you, um, was it, which, the, you got two cosplay costumes behind you. Um, yep. Which one, um, you had one made up for you and did you make the other one or were they both made up for yep. you? So um, the one, that one was made for me by Thomas Harmon and uh, mm. Justin Smith. Um, and the other one behind me, I made myself. Um, it took a little while. I think um, I made the cloak in one night, though, because I just decided I had to have it. So I just did it. Yeah. Um, the biggest challenge was the headpiece because it's made of foam and um, mm. I've never like carved out a foam before so it was a bit hard <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> what, what, um, um, carry on I also entered the um, the Liliana cosplay in the Benina Fashion Awards last year. Um, it was a very new section, the cosplay section, so hoping that next year when we do it again Unfortunately, this year has been canned again, also due to COVID. Um, we'll have more entries. There was four of us in this section. I got beaten out by a uh, um, Jedi, and a um, the winner was the Jandal dress from Priscilla Queen of Desert. So it yeah. was very fierce competition. <laughs> so, um, how many people entered that competition? Um, so in the entire competition, there was about two or three hundred. 
uh, two, 200 entries. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, our section, because it was new, we only had four entries. So mm -hmm. it really would be awesome if we had more entries into the cosplay section of the Binnett mm -hmm. Fashion Awards. Because I well, think, yeah, it would be really cool for all of the people that put attend it to see that kind of awesome love because everyone loves their characters and that's the thing about um about cosplaying is like there is a lot of work put into it and the um the thing is that the only time people can really show that off is at armageddon and stuff and yeah. you know we have bigger competitions and i mean you know i've got my friend from croatia um uh, sonia the hobbit you know she's she's into many competitions and won many of them and yeah. and and there was like i mean this Benina, um, was this at Waipu this year? No, that's the Waipu. Um, Waipu has their own um, wearable arts awards. Um, mm. So they do also, I think, have a, um, I don't know if they have a cosplay section in that one. I've actually attended it once, unfortunately, due to the fact I don't drive and they have a very stringent um, training, like going every night um, regime. Um, I haven't been able to enter there yet, but maybe in the future. Um, yeah. So the Benina one is usually held at Forum North. Um, my first entry at the Benina Fashion Awards was actually in the wearable arts section. I made two very oversized dream catches, one for night and one for day. Yeah. And um, it was made from <laughs> duct tape and uh, <laughs> and weed matting. And, yeah, so... Um, that that was really cool entering the wearable arts first because um it gave me because they're only judging you on the art side of it um it gave me a bit more confidence to be able to do something a bit different um and the wearable arts section has they have a junior wearable arts and senior wearable arts mm. or, or open wearable arts and that's usually well um, attended um, so and the junior wearable arts boy we're in trouble when they get into the open because they're doing some amazing things <laughs> it's, it's the other thing is like it's um there's so much um overseas there's so much uh um competition in the area of cosplay and there's a lot yep. more people involved in it and it's more yep. normal, I guess. Uh, you know, it's, it's yeah, it's not as normal here. <laughs> yeah, it's taken it's taken a few years with uh, with Armageddon putting on the shows and uh, Expo every year, and throughout New Zealand, it's made it more acceptable. And I think um, the more people into competitions like these, and as well as smaller um, events, I think it's going to become a bigger, you know, part of what we do in Northland here. And I think that's really cool to see people like yourself and with Wayne's workshop helping. Yep people who are interested in that to actually create their own products and uh, create their own wearable art. And it is an art form. I mean, you know, because it, not, it, it takes yeah. a lot of effort to put it together. How long did it take you to um, put together your one there with the headpiece? I keep forgetting um, the name. Um, <laughs> Liana. So um, she was, um, I, I started her, um, Gosh, now I'm trying to remember. So um, the intention was to get her into this, um, the, um, the 2018, but I didn't make it till the 2019. Mm -hmm. um, so um, because I managed to finish it a week after the closing date to mm -hmm. enter her, so I didn't enter that year, um, mm -hmm. but I finished her in time for Armageddon, which was really good. Um, uh, Liliana's um, two ends. <laughs> I'll, I'll work it out. So the other thing was, um, you, you did a, at Christmas time. I think it was at Carmo. You did a, um, um, a, a was a Batgirl or Batwoman costume? A uh, Batwoman. Uh, Batwoman. Yeah. Yeah. How did? Yeah, how did? Batwoman. Um, yeah. How did kids and young people? You know, uh, think. What do they think about you walking around dressed as um, Batwoman? Um, they actually really enjoyed it. And I actually really um, – uh, so basically well, the year before I went to the Carmo Santa Parade and I sat there and you know, the, the steampunk has come down, and that's really great for the adults. And I was thinking, what's there for the kids, you know? Um, so I um, got on with Wayne and I says, Wayne, we can do something, you know. And we got, you know, the ball running and then um, – because Wayne is also a school teacher, um, things fell off for him because he had to do papers and 
school stuff. And uh, he's, he's such a supportive person. It's great. Um, so um, myself and my friend, oh, why is the name gone from my head? I've written it down. Um, she is a cosplayer. She. Nay, nay. Nay, nay, yeah. So right. me and her got together um, with the support of um, the Glow Golf. So, um, mm. so uh, that was um, oh, names are going from my head today. Um, so with the support from Glow Golf, um, we got a good group together. So we had people from from Gears of War. We had um, we had Sandy from Greece. We had. Yeah. Um, Temple Guards and things like that. Um, Temple Guard is actually um, Justin Smith's cosplay. Mm -hmm. um, so we had a few different costumes, and I think that the wide range actually made it more accessible to people. Um, yeah. And the kids, I was just giving high fives down the row, and then I, we decided, you know, as off the bat, because we got to the end, it was like, shall we just go back through the crowd? Mm. So and we took photos with heaps of kids and we had one mum who messaged us back on the found the cosplay page the Northland mm. cosplay page and thanked us and gave us photos and her kids just was over the moon with you know the fact that we took time to have photos of them and that's the thing it was there for them yes. as as much for us it was to do it we wanted to do it for them. You know, yeah, I, I really enjoy, um, like, I mean, I follow a lot of people on my Instagram that are cosplayers and I, and I comment on how much effort it's got taken on them to make it because I love seeing people who actually put the effort into creation of it because I tried myself to do it. It takes a lot of time to do a costume <laughs> and, you know, and so I appreciate when someone creates their own costume and I think, and I, and there's a, there's not just a, um, a showing off of it, but the actual process that goes into creating it the time getting the material together the cost of getting the material together and then the final piece being able you know after showing all the processes of doing it then seeing the final piece in being worn is amazing and i yeah. think um a lot of people just think it's like okay you know it's, we're just that you're just trying to wear it to show off or something but there's a lot more to involve to it do you think um i know a lot of introverts um wear costumes um you know get involved in cosplay because it allows them to be more extrovert hidden inside the costume how do you wh what about yourself do you feel like you're an introvert or um, extrovert? I, I can be quite introverted um but um <sighs> Working a service, you kind of have to get over that. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, it's, um, uh, the, the reason why I did Batgirl was just to try and um, try and get the um, get something for the kids. It was um, purely, you know, it wasn't something that I would have gone out of my way to do in the first place, but I was like, I have to do something for the kids. So, um I have to remake the headpiece, unfortunately, because um, it got hot in the sun and it's um, lifted. <laughs> but um, otherwise, it would be behind me. <laughs> so, uh, so, what do you enjoy about cosplay? Do you enjoy the fact that uh, it's um, the final piece, or do you enjoy the process of making it, or do you enjoy the interaction? I, I like the interaction, and I like that like recognition. You know, when I wore Elspeth, um, not everybody knew. Mm. who Elspeth was, but the kids loved seeing a female warrior. They thought yeah. that was awesome, yeah. yeah. So that they loved that concept of it. Um, and the and the peop the guys who recognised, I was like, can I get a photo? And I went to the Magic of the Gathering has their own little thing at Armageddon, and I went there and I got photos with people there and, and even sat down and had a game against one of their pros, and that was fun, you know. It's, it's cool. <laughs> Yeah, it's the whole um, experience. <laughs> so, how long have you been um, creating um, cosplays for costumes? Um, so, Lily's the first one I've created myself. So, probably only a couple of years. How many have you done so far? Um, Two, <laughs> two or three. I'm yeah. in the process of doing another one for Flesh and Blood. So, awesome. 
That'll be a new release soon. <laughs> how, how long does it usually take to, for you to create a costume? Because I mean, it I'm, I'm sure it depends on what the um, what in, entails as a costume and the characters that that what they're wearing, like armor or you know headpieces. But how long does it usually take? Um, it usually takes a little while. Um, with Batwoman, I was able to because it's like jeans and a really so I was able to purchase pieces for it. Mm. Um, with Liliana, I got really lucky on a um, purchase on Wish with some really lacy boots that actually fitted, but they're mm. painful if you wear for too long because uh, <laughs> they're higher than I'm used to. Um, so it depends how much of your cosplay is ready-made and how much you have mm. to do. Um, so my bad woman took me two weeks. Liliana took me three months. Wow. That gives you a bit of a concept. Mm. And that's from getting all my resource material, like, whoops. So this is what I do. I kind of print out resource material, trying to find out. I think this is Zelia. There's a comic type one. Can you so just have a part of it, please? So the other way. Yep. Yep. Wow. So she's, she's a flesh and blood character. Cool. So that's the next one you're doing? Yeah. This wow. is going to be the hard work, though. Ah, uh, the bow and, arrow, bow and arrow. Yeah. So it's going to be – she's a ranger-type character, so mm. that's going to be the hard work is working on that bow and arrow. That's going to probably take me the longest out of the whole costume. Awesome. Uh, that's what I love about cosplay is actually seeing characters that are on page paper as 2D or 3D in, in flesh, right? Seeing somebody wear it, the beauty of just, you know, looking yeah. over and seeing someone dressed up as that. And I think, and, and it's a very, um, I, I mean, of course, it's, um, you know, you have a lot of um, older people wear, um, doing that, but the, the excitement from kids seeing their favorite characters like Batman or Batgirl, Batwoman, Supergirl yeah. and Superman, and being able to get a photo taken is, I mean, I've taken yeah. so many photos with um, people from Armageddon that I, yeah. you know, I use it as a, a screenshot, um, sorry, screensaver sometimes. It's watching all these hundreds of photos come up, and it's just yeah. the beauty of that. And and I think the more we do it here in Northland, the more we're going to have a lot more people do it because it's it's just going to allow people to appreciate the, the creative side of them. And also not only that, there's like we're talking about making something. Uh, physically yeah. actually making something that's just on a piece of paper come to life and um, yeah. working through the, um, as, as, as Wayne said, um, told me a couple of years ago, it's working through the issues of finding out what's going to work and what's not going to work and what's going to be comfortable, yeah. what isn't going to be comfortable. And he mentioned yeah. about, um, you know, from the feet up, work from the yeah. feet up. Yeah, work from the feet up. Yeah. So your shoes are going to be really so comfortable. Um, I must have, I must actually mention there was a young boy in our section at Vanina. Um, he did um, he did Achilles. That's, mm. That was his hero he did. Um, he was 10, and I was so proud of him. I, I, I was so happy to share the stage with him. So he was the, the fourth of our four in the section, and I was so proud of him and that was like he made everything. He made a shield, made his cost, and I thought, well, if that's you know, he's that's just awesome. It's inspiring. It inspired me, and you know, I can't even remember his name. I feel bad for that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the cool thing, isn't it, to watch some um, some young kid get up and create something himself to wear. I mean, I remember when we were younger, you could basically it was a it wasn't nobody actually said anything negative about dressing up or anything like that. And now it's like sometimes yeah. I think, oh, you know, what are you trying to prove or something? And I yeah, hope yeah. that like, you know that more people do it up here in Northland. That the more um, access and easier it becomes for other kids to do it because. Uh, I mean, of course, um, you know, Plunge is running a competition for cosplay, but also yeah. to see them, see people do it. I mean, I, last year, uh, you know, you had um, some young kids come up and do that. And it's yeah. just, you know, uh, I think um, putting the effort in and getting a reward for it is the best thing. Uh, and, uh, you know, of course, not everybody's going to be able to win, but at least yeah. everybody's going to be able to see what you've created. Um, let's see. Um, I think we've probably uh, talked ourselves here on this. Um, there was something else we're going to mention. Let me just go through my little note here. If I've forgotten something. Um, 
for us. We've just covered everything, haven't we? Yeah, I think we've pretty much done it all tonight. Um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Oh, let's talk about being a mum. That's the last one. Let's finish up on being a mum. You've got two kids. And what do I think about, um, you know, what What do your kids think about this? Well, they were pretty good, um, mostly to start with. Um, they um, found it a little bit weird, you know, mum's a nerd kind of thing, but they kind of already knew that. Um, uh, so because my eldest is actually turning 18 this year and my youngest is 15 so um they're both at the age where they can be independent and they understand it um they when when i went as liliana we went and um found our um me and hayley liked a particular program so we went and got a photo with a um character and i was in my elspeth and she wasn't she felt cool to be with me so that was all right Except for the fact that, um, unfortunately, um, my sorry, my Liliana drops down, and she's like, "Mum, you need to pull it up." <laughs> so yeah, it's um, she's they looked after me, and also my mum really she drove me down, and she was my support person as well. So, um, so between my mum and my kids, they kind of looked after me and let, and let me be doing my cosplay. So I was very lucky that they were both at the age where they can help and also do their own thing because, yeah, my youngest one's decided she wants to collect knives, so things yeah. like that. So she, she goes to Armageddon and she can find things she wants, so, it's, you know, it's quite good. Yeah. yeah I think, um, th that's the other thing. I mean, like, w with the weapons of uh, involved in cosplaying, I mean, uh, yeah. uh I realized this year that I had to get a uh, a metal detector because the fact that sometimes kids, you know, come in with like metal weapons. And so yeah. you got to make sure that they don't because in case you hurt somebody. And of yeah, course, that's, yeah. that's the same thing yeah. with Armageddon as well. Um, yeah. So, um, how, you know, you're going to be creating this uh, bow and arrow. Um, what are you going to make yeah. that weapon out of? So um, basically most of the time weapons are made from foam. This one behind me is foam and dowel so this main shaft is dowel wrapped in leather there's foam up there and it's got a fiber rod in the inside um you can't have any metal um even though you can actually purchase swords at um again um yeah that are full of metal. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so I, um yeah so i mean that's the other thing i do love about um you know especially with uh anime and manga characters yeah. um of course we're gonna have a huge um huge area for anime and manga this year at um plunge but i, I love i love the that side of costumes as well as much as i like the um, european and western cultures the costumes i do enjoy um the asian Oh, and Japanese, yeah, and there's, there's a very strong um, group for that, especially in Auckland. They actually have their own um, like convention down there for that particular type. Because um, mm. I'm a member of all the cosplay New Zealand pages, I see their bits and pieces. And they've they've even got like there's one girl I met online waiting for um, a um, a uh, what's a signature from Daniel from Stargate for my partner. Um, yeah. She is a part of a pop um, um, manga style group. So they all dress up and then they do karaoke and dance. And I was like, that's just so cool. <laughs> so, now, yeah, it's the people about, you meet too. Yeah, talking about that, there, was, there is also a group for um, steampunk and fungare as well. Yeah, very so, strong, very strong group, yeah. They've been running for a few years and uh, hopefully, I mean, like with Wayne and his workshop, hopefully there's, you know, the, um, uh, people get more involved and there's a bigger group of cosplayers in Whangarei and Northland. It'll be amazing if we can get a, you know, I've always, like, I've have, yeah. I have a passion for cosplay because I like to see characters, you know, I create being oh, worn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's just, there's nothing, there's nothing like seeing, um, you know, seeing Batman, somebody next to you dressed up as batman you know but then actually sees your own characters do that um appearing next year is going to be amazing um now um is there any i uh, like in finishing because we've talked basically talked ourselves out of this so uh in finishing how let's i'll give you a couple of minutes to think about this as i always do 
for our guests. Um, the final words for, for about what you do and everything that you can think of as um, you know area of, of your interest and stuff. Yeah. Um. Sorry, child, just putting phone on charger. <laughs> we have a no phone in rooms policy. Um, <laughs> um, so, well, I, and, and you know, and totaling up, I, I, I really enjoy the cosplay world and I really enjoy the gaming world. I am by no means the best at everything or anything. I just enjoy sharing my characters with other people and, you um, I get better with every time I do something. So, you know, there's no failures. There's only, you know, lessons to get better and things like that. So it needn't be a scary thing. Um, mm -hmm. I've met some really brilliant teenage girls that, and boys that do um, fairy costumes, and they are great. Um, and, um, you know, it's, it's all expressions, and I think that's an awesome thing. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Um, thank you, um, thank you, Lynette, for um, joining me here tonight. I mean, it's taking you know, taking time from, from from your family and from creating what you're creating right now. Um, I really appreciate it. I'm sure everybody who's watching will appreciate it as well. And so, from us tonight, thank you um, for joining us, and for all you guys who are watching here in Whangarei on Facebook, thank you, or around the world, thank you. And if you're watching us on YouTube, like, subscribe, as I say, and share if you enjoyed what you watched and Thank you for joining us tonight and kakite ano, farewell, wherever you are, be safe, take care of yourselves and look after your families and be well. Good night. Thank you, Thank you Lynette. Good night. Bye. <laughs>